practical ways to reduce pesticide exposure on a plant-based diet by Galit Goldfarb. We all know the health benefits of a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, but what about the pesticides that are on conventionally grown plants? Is it better to stick to a diet largely based on animal products to avoid these chemicals? Well, pesticides are toxic, and they are intended to be so. They are made and used to kill living species, including insects and fungi, that are considered by farmers to be pests to their crops. Although research into pesticide residue and health is not something usually funded by big corporations that have monetary gain, the studies that were conducted show that pesticide residues have been scientifically linked to cancer, neurological disorders, hormone disruption, and allergies. Many pesticides are potent nerve agents at, and even at relatively low levels may be hazardous to human health. Repeated exposure to such pesticides may result in impaired memory and concentration, disorientation, depression, irritability, confusion, headaches, delayed reaction time, drowsiness, and insomnia. Pesticides inhibit the action of neurotransmitter enzymes in nerve cells and thereby have a neurotoxic effect on nerve cells. Fetuses and young children where brain development is at its peak are most at risk. Research shows a clear link between a mother's exposure to pesticides during pregnancy and lower intelligence scores, perceptual reasoning problems, and more in children aged 6 to 9. In May 2010, researchers at Harvard University found increased risk for ADHD among American children exposed to typical levels of pesticides. Pesticides are also disastrous for the environment. Modern agriculture with its large-scale use of pesticides is responsible for 70% of water pollution in the United States. Glyphosate, Roundup's active ingredient, is the most widely used pesticide in the U.S. About 100 million pounds are applied to U.S. farms and lawns every year, and this is a considered a carcinogen. The CDC's National Biomonitoring Program has detected pesticides residues in blood and urine samples of 96% of Americans aged 6 and older. So the question arises, should we still consume a plant-based diet with all of these chemicals involved? The answer is a definite yes. By consuming a plant-based diet, it has immense benefits to human health. But, and unfortunately there is a but, we should aim to reduce our pesticide exposure through certain practices. Here are three practical ways to do this. Number one, buy organic. Organically grown produce is produced without synthetic chemicals or fertilizers, without genetic engineering, without radiation, and without sewage sludge, and without Roundup. But not only that, buying organic also supports environmentally friendly farming practices that minimize soil erosion, safeguards workers, protects water quality and wildlife, and the future of our planet. Research studies have shown that pesticide exposure drops dramatically when people switch to an all-organic diet, and when they return to eating non-organic conventionally grown foods, exposure rebounds. Unfortunately, I know this option is not always available for everyone due to the costs involved, but we know that consuming lots of fruits and vegetables outweighs the risk of pesticide exposure, so what can we do? Although basic washing methods will somewhat reduce pesticide levels, it is still not enough because the USDA tests for pesticides on washed and peeled produce in most states. Unfortunately, washing food is not a real long-term solution as some modern pesticides are taken up by the plant's roots and distributed throughout the plant. So number two is learn which foods have higher pesticide residue levels and aim to buy at least these foods organic. Every year, the Environmental Working Group releases a list of foods that were found to have highest pesticide residue levels. Much of the health risks associated with pesticide residues on produce are concentrated in a relatively small number of fruits and vegetables. Here is the Environmental Working Group's list for 2017, opt to buy these foods at least organic. These foods include strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, peaches, pears, cherries, grapes, celery, tomatoes, sweet bell peppers, potatoes, and hot peppers. Aim to buy whole grains and legumes also organic. If even buying these foods organic seems like something that is way out of reach, now there is a company called Thrive Market where you can buy natural products at up to half of the retail prices delivered straight to your door. 
So number three, you also have the option to grow your own foods. Foods with high pesticide levels can be grown in your own backyard. A small garden plot can provide much of the required produce for a family of four if planned correctly. And there are many natural pesticides you may use to repel the pests. See my blog for more details on those. Although pesticide residues are harmful to human health, we now have viable alternatives that help reduce pesticide residue exposure to almost nothing without having to give up a healthy plant-based diet. In fact, the more people spending money on foods that were grown without organophosphate pesticides, the more voice we have to make a change in the way modern agriculture is growing food. So for more information on healthy living, visit us at thegorilladiet.com. Thank you very much for listening.